was tough. Cozy room with a cozy bed in a castle? I could have stayed at Huntington Castle all day, lounging and exploring, but the thought of a new adventure, a delicious breakfast, and an excitable butterfly eventually got me up and at him. First stop of the day was Ferns Castle in Ferns, about a 20 minute drive from where I was staying. In my last video, I touched on the subject of Dermot McBurrow, the fierce and power hungry King of Leinster from 1126 to 1171, who I am a direct descendant of. Before all the business with the Normans, Ferns was the capital of Leinster and is also the place where Dermot was born died and now rests in the cemetery outside St. Aidan's Cathedral. During Dermot's time, the place where the castle rests in ruins today was a castle made of wood surrounded by a stone wall that was burned during an invasion in the 1100s. The now 800-year-old castle was built later on by his granddaughter's husband, the knight William Marshall, and his son, William Marshall the Younger, between 1199 and 1224. It's said to have been modeled after the castles he saw in the Holy Land while away on crusade. The castle was originally square shaped and had four towers with a dry moat cut into the bedrock and a big stone wall surrounding the castle. Today, none of that wall remains and the moat is just a fenced off ditch. The castle was destroyed partly due to neglect, but it really took a beating when Oliver Cromwell's forces set out to destroy it, as they did with Duna Mace Castle and so many other historically significant places across Ireland. St. Aidan's Cathedral in Ferns is said to be the smallest cathedral in Europe and was built on the site of an early 13th century medieval cathedral. In the graveyard outside its walls, the broken remains of a high cross, also damaged by Cromwell forces, marks the grave of Dermot McMurrow. field lies the remains of a ruined abbey founded by Dermot in 1158. In the winter of 1167-1168, this is where Dermot took refuge while waiting for his Norman buddies to arrive. After my time in Ferns, I drove about an hour back up to Kilkenny to check out Kilkenny Castle. Kilkenny is such a vibrant city and it's a shame that I was only there to see the castle. There are so many fun shops and restaurants to check out, I wish I had more time. 
It did, however, take me about an hour to figure out where to park, which kind of reminded me of driving in downtown Halifax and that made me feel right at home. Before checking out the castle proper, I went to see the Ross Tapestry, 15 gorgeous embroidered panels that tell the tale of Dermot and the arrival of the Normans in Ireland. This one depicts the marriage of William Marshall and Isabel de Clare, builders of Ferns Castle. Kilkenny Castle was built as a wooden structure shortly after the Norman Conquest began in the late 1100s by Richard de Clare, or Strongbow, and then replaced by a stone structure in 1192 by his son-in-law, William Marshall. The castle was sold to James Butler, 3rd Earl of Ormond in 1391, and remained the ancestral home of the Butler family for almost 600 years. The castle we see today is mostly a Victorian remodel of the original medieval castle. noticed this giant covered up archaeological dig pit and got very curious so I'll be looking into what they found and maybe I'll do a follow-up in the future. When I was in Ireland it was a historic heat wave. This day was hot and I mean hot. After spending a lot of time in the sun in ferns and driving without air conditioning to Kilkenny, by the time I got to the castle, I honestly was not feeling great at all. I almost didn't even go, but I rallied and I'm glad I did. But unfortunately, I rushed through and barely took any photos. The castle is gorgeous. It is everything you would expect a castle to be, but everything's roped off and in glass cases. And the raw experience of seeing the ruins of Duna Mace and Ferns just felt more real to me and more visceral. And for me, the amount of tourists that swarmed the grounds was frustrating. At Ferns, I was alone to experience the ruins at my own speed in my own way. And at Kilkenny, it truly was a tourist attraction. But honestly, my bad for going during peak tourist season. A lot of this trip was a learning experience and I know now that I am a fall, spring kind of traveler, and I am definitely keeping that in mind as I plan my next excursion. I reluctantly got back in my hot car and drove about an hour down to Waterford where I would be spending the night. I checked in, freshened up, and set off walking down the waterfront streets looking for a place to have supper. I ended up at the Dooley Hotel and ate one of the yummiest burgers I have ever had, drank a cider, and listened to some live music. And in these moments, although I was badly sunburned, probably had heat stroke, and was just ridiculously thirsty and tired, despite all of that, in that moment I realized I was doing it. I was living the moments I planned for so long. And I felt joyous and free and fulfilled and at peace for the very first time in a very long time. And I was grateful. Mm -hmm. 